So in this short video, I wanted to exercise the definition of pump uh, just to show you what does it mean to prove that a, a word is pumpable. That is to say that W isn't this pump operator. And again, just to recall, the pumpable part of a language is essentially what this um, predicate is rep representing. And we're saying that uh, it will be a subset of L uh, such that all words that have at least the length of p are pumpable. And we already saw what this, what pumpable means. So when we say that w is in the pumpable part of the language, um, we must show all of these um, conditions highlighted here in, in English um, that I would now want to show how to prove this formally in clock. Okay, so let's look what we want to use is basically I'm going to follow this exercise where we have I want to show that the string 100 is in the pumpable part of the language given by this NFA. But as you've seen, we don't have NFAs formalized in our Turing library, but we do have regular expressions. So the first thing I did was I represented this NFA as an equivalent regular expression. So you can represent that with the first line here and that would be one and then one star followed by zero followed by zero star so one followed by one star followed by zero followed by zero star okay so l1 here is just a regular expression so now what i want to show is that one zero zero belongs in the language in the pumpable part of l1 okay so when we do accept of L1, what we're saying is we want to convert this regular expression as a language. And what we're saying here is this is the pumpable part of L1 where strings have at least a length of three. Why? Because essentially we're formalizing this statement. Okay, so now what we want to show is that 100 is in the pumping language in the pumpable part of L1. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, as you saw before, let's go back to this slide. What we need to prove is basically be able to apply the definition of pump. So once we do that, and if we just uh, do apply pump def, you'll see that it requires the X, Y, and Z. So it's, Cock is asking you to divide the string in the input so this string here into three parts, one that represents the left-hand side, the second one represents the loop, and the third represents the right-hand side, so the thing that comes after the loop. So the looping part, the non-looping part on the left-hand side, so x is going to be 1, 0, the looping part is going to be 0, and the remaining is going to be epsilon. So that's exactly what we decided here. So let's use the same... Oops, sorry. Here. So let's use the same um, representation as in this slide 11. So we have, that's what we do in the first line. So what we're saying is, okay, I'm going to give x to be 1, 0, y to be 0, and z to be the empty string. Okay, so now what we see is we have these four goals to prove. What do we have to prove? First thing we need to show Let's go back. So first thing we need to show is that the string can in fact be divided into those three parts. So that's usually a trivial part. Secondly, we need to show that the middle part is not empty. This is, should also be easy. And thirdly, we need to show that the first two parts have to be at most of length three. And finally, this is the difficult and interesting part. We need to show that I can pump I as many times as I want and the pump length, the pumped string will still be an L. So this is the interesting part. Okay, so let's see. The first proof again, the first step, what we need to show is that we can in fact divide the input string on the left hand side into three parts, the X, Y, and Z that we defined. And that can be achieved just by reflexivity. Secondly, we need to show that the Y part, so the part in the middle, cannot be zero. And that's very easy to prove because we just need to show that uh, the string with zero is not the same as the string with the empty string, and you can do that just by introducing the negation. As you know, different means 
uh, equals implies false. Um, and then what we do is we use the explosion principle to just remove this branch. So we're done. Next thing we need to show is that 100 zero zero is smaller or equal than 3. And as we know, it's equal than 3. So we just use the auto tactics to get rid of this uh, proof. Finally, we need to show that for any y, so for any pump, we need to prove that it is the case where if I can pump the looping part, so here we, we recall the use of function pow, which is applying the, the power of a string, so we can pump it i times for any i, so it could even be zero. Okay, so if we do inters of this, now we have some i that we don't know, and we have to prove that this works. Okay, so the first thing we should do is we should do, we should open int and l1 so that it gets rid of it, and we do it like so. So once we do int, so let me explain why I do this. First I do unfold of in, that takes care of the outer uh, in, and then I do unfold of l1, uh, just so we know what's on the right hand side. Okay. Secondly, what we see is on the left hand side, we have a problem, which is, okay, so if we try to, if we hide the notations, what we see is that, let me see, okay. So what we'd like to do now is search for a theorem that can take care of this one, right? And as we know, this one should be uh, the regular expression one should handle the first character. Okay, so if we search, we note that there is indeed a theorem called accept cons that can handle this. Okay, so let's try to apply it. So if we do that, we get an error. And what the error is saying is that it's unable to unify this thing with that thing. And that w is a surprising error because that we were expecting this to be ap applicable. But it's not because, as you might have imagined, when um, parentheses appear from left to right. So that means that these two expressions are parenthesized, and then this expression is parenthesized, and so on. So this is actually harder to represent. Um, so if we want to enforce the order, we can just put parentheses around the various expressions and enforce a simpler um, representation. So now let's do that. So now if we, now we see that the only thing we can apply, so what we did was we search for anything that has a regular expression that on the left hand side most has a character, which is what we do here, and we want to consume that. Okay, we can use directly accept cons, and if we do accept cons, note that this one and this one will disappear. So we do that. And that goes away. So now what do we see? We have zero and then zero star. That means that we don't really care about this r star one, right? It, we're not going through that uh, loop. Let's go back here. Right. So we go one and then we skip this self loop altogether, right? So that means that we want to skip this regular expression as well. So how do we do that? Let me actually remove all this code. Well, we can do search for something that has an R star followed by something. Okay, and now we see that we have uh, actually just one thing that we could do. We can do accept app star skip, which is saying that if you can prove the thing that follows, you actually don't need to, you can skip, discard the left-hand side, the star on the left-hand side. Okay, that's, that's what this is proving. Okay, so let's do that. So now we do apply, accept, app, star, skip. Okay, so now what we see, we see that we have zero on the left-hand side, and then followed by zero to the power of i, and then an empty string, and then what do we need to show? We have zero, 
so this zero should match here, and this r star should match this power. Okay, but we kind of have this annoying thing at the end, right? And as we know, we cannot simply discard it by doing simple. If we do simple, this this empty string is still there. So we would like to remove that first, just to simplify our goal. So we can do, let's search for something that has a end at the end, and we can see that ah, we could rewrite this expression to remove the parentheses from there, the empty string from there. And we do that with the theorem. Okay, so now it's a bit clearer what we need to do. So first we have a character on the left, and that is taken care of that. And we already saw that we can use the accept cons for that situation, and we do. So let's see back what we do. So we have on the left-hand side a character. In our regular expression, the left-hand side has a character as well. So the only theorem we can use is uh, accept cons. And now we get an interesting result where we have the power of i, and then we have r star of a character. So if we search, we see that there is actually a theorem um, with that. So we can do util pow. Okay, and then in. Okay, so we're saying that on the left hand side we have pow, and on the right hand side we have um, in some regular expression that we don't care about. And we find these two theorems, and what we see is that there's one that is more general that says if you can prove that S, the string S, is in R, then I, you can trivially prove that S of I is also in star R. Which makes sense, right? If you multiply this, if you elevate the string s to the power of i, uh, that whole string is definitely in our r star uh, r. But you have a simpler one, which is saying if the string is just a character, which is the case, then you can apply it directly. So let's apply this theorem. So we do apply, pow pow, and this is done. Okay, so we proved exactly this slide we show that the string 100 is in the pump up, pumpable subset of L1. Um, but what we've learned from the pumping lemma is that every regular language automatically has this condition for free. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that we don't need to prove this directly because all regular languages already have this result proven for us automatically. So what we do is if we we can do goal and we can show that in oh actually we can show that there exists some n such that in is in pump pump what am i missing ah n okay so we can say that there exists some n such that this holds so how do we prove that first we need to prove that the language L1 is regular, so we do assert H Okay, so how do we prove that? Let's look at how we define regular. Oh, we prove if that is if that happens, so we just apply with r equals l1 okay so this we need to prove that and as you know we just do reflex cvt and that takes care of that okay so we know that l1 is uh, regular so now what we need to show ah we can use the pumping lemma apply pumping in h okay so now we have all this we have that there exists some P, which is the pumping length, such that these two things happen. So let's do that. Destruct H as P 
n uh, h. Okay, and we have the first condition which we don't care about. That is to say, I want to discard this. I don't really need that. Okay, and now I'm saying that I have h. So this n here is going to be p, right? Because that's going to be the pumping length. So let's say exists p is my pumping length. Now I need to show that this holds. And can I do that? Um, first, I need to show that 